And good morning. You're listening to Winds of Praise Broadcasting. This is KWPBLP Newport 98.7 FM, and it's 7.30, like right on the button. And today's the 22nd of November 2021, and this is Scott Albright broadcasting in the Winds of Praise studio on the West Coast, Oregon, Newport, Oregon, and we're also streaming online at windsofpraise.com. And normally on a Monday like this at 7.30, I'd be here with a studio full of friends, including Colleen McNeil and Ernie Moquin and Rob Dupra, and all three of them are gone and away. Uh, Colleen is with family, and she is uh, uh, presently bringing comfort and support to a family, her family, uh, of which Brett B-R-E-T-T is really needing healing from the Lord and um, gone through some cancer surgery and he needs healing from the Lord. And so we lift him up again this morning uh, to you, Heavenly Father. We know that you are the great healer. There's nothing, nothing that you cannot do. And we pray for his complete healing and health and activity with his family, Lord. We pray for healing for Brett in Jesus' name. And we also pray for Ernie Moquin, who's away with, I think, family, is going to California finally, according to what he's written on the calendar. And uh, he has family down there. So this is the traveling season after all, Thanksgiving and all. And we pray that you would be safe if you are setting out to travel. And Rob Dupra is traveling down to Medford, I believe. They are uh, acquiring and taking after some property down there him and Cheryl. And so they're away. And that leaves just me. (laughs) So the last time this happened, I decided to be bold and open up the mic. And I ended up giving my testimony and basically talked about how the radio station started. We are now in our 25th year of operation, and it has been just one miracle after another. And we give God all the credit And speaking of that, we really haven't said much about it, but we are planning, we're in the midst of planning a 25th anniversary celebration, and we have secured some dates up at the CRC is what they call it. It's a camp, a family camp outside of Salem, and it's called the Christian Renewal Center. It's a lovely place, family owned, and we have reserved the last week of July. So I think it's July 29th through 31st for uh, people to get together and just enjoy some time. And we're praying about who to uh, contact for leading worship, if even we are to do that, Um, as far as a name goes, someone that people would recognize and go, man, I want to go to that. Or maybe it would just be local folks. We're we're not quite sure. But uh, we have secured the date. So if you're interested, you could contact me and get more information. Uh, my phone number is 541-270-7855, or you could go to the CRC, that's the Christian Renewal Center, and uh, go some do some registration right there. <clears throat> Pardon me. The camp is pretty nice. It's uh, really set up well, and we've been there multiple times. And what we've got is two nights and five meals. They have a a dining room and it's $140 per person and there's beds available, uh, nice facilities. So it's kind of camping a getaway and it's going to be July 29th through 31st in celebration of our 25th anniversary. So what I want to do in opening the mics in the next 20 minutes is bring some teaching from the Lord. Normally I'm on the teaching circuit at our little church in Salettes. It's called the Sacred Ground Baptist Church. And I'm on the fourth Sunday. Well, I won't be on the fourth Sunday because I've invited our friends, Mike and Mickey Harden, to come and to sing and to minister the gospel and to speak. And that's what they do. They've been traveling to Arizona and are on their way back to the coast, the Oregon coast. They live out of their RV. And Mike has been instrumental in bringing new equipment to the radio station. And so we've got some new gear ready to install and we've got some software. And I invited them to come out to Sluts and minister. So in light of that, I wanted to bring a teaching because another thing that we've been doing in Sluts is every Saturday morning at seven o'clock, we've been gathering to read through the Torah portions. And it's been wonderful. We read the 
the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, and we read through what they call the Haftarah, which is the prophetic version. And my understanding is that when the Jewish folks were told you can't read the Torah anymore, they looked at alternate scripture and they were reading from the from the Isaiah, uh, Kings, uh, you know, Micah, those things according to a schedule. And then we read from the New Testament because we fully believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that he has come and all of creation has pointed to a savior. And it's just nice to see the roots and to, to dig into the roots of our faith. And this particular Saturday, uh, we were studying on the life of Jacob and it was relevant to me because there was one point when Jacob was very, very afraid. It, as you recall, Jacob was a twin with Esau, and Jacob had received his father's blessing, although Esau was the firstborn. Because you see, Esau sold his birthright for a pot of stew. He had no regard to anything of lasting value. He was only interested in feeding his belly. And he actually sold his birthright to his brother, Jacob. And so there was some deception involved when Isaiah, Isaac, excuse me, when Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob. And Esau was so angry that he said, as soon as dad dies, I'm killing you, brother. And that's the kind of fella he was. And Jacob fled to his uncle's house, to Laban or Laban. And there, God blessed him with four wives and 11 sons. And the 12th son was born back in the promised land. But at one point, he was to face his brother Esau, and he was terrified. And that's what we studied. And the reason I'd like to bring this study to you is because we all tend to be afraid of something and nervous and we shouldn't be and I want to demonstrate what Jacob did and that's that would be my teaching um, so if you would turn with me in your Bible to Genesis 32 and this is the subtitle is Jacob prepares to meet Esau and so basically, Jacob had sent messengers ahead to Esau saying, we're coming out of this land of Laban, my uncle, and we're coming back into the promised land. And so he had heard that Esau was coming to greet him with 400 of his men. And remember that Esau said, I'm going to kill you. So in Genesis 32, verse 7, it says, in great fear and distress, Jacob divided the people who were with him into two groups, and the flocks and herds and camels as well. He thought, if Esau comes and attacks one group, the group that is left may escape. And then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two groups. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper, and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. And so that's my point. There's, there's an illustration of when we're afraid and trembling to recall what God has said. What has God promised? Because God's promises are true and secure. If God has promised something, he is not going to go back on his promises. And so when we're afraid, it's good to recount the scripture, the words, the promise. And I'm told that there are 365 accounts of do not be afraid in the Bible. And I haven't taken the time to look those up yet. But one of my favorite expressions of do not be afraid is from Psalm 23. And where David says, 
Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Do you catch that? I'm not going to be afraid because God, you are with me. And so what are the promises of God? Well, the promises of God are for a Savior. And I'd like you to write these down if you can. Here's the teaching because when I go away, maybe you'll still have something written down and you'll be able to to write these scriptures out. It would be good for you to write them out. So there's eight verses that I would give you to write out. The first is Genesis 3.15, and we're going to go through these. Genesis 3.15. Number two, Genesis 12.2. Then number three, Genesis 15, 1. Number four, Genesis 15, 5. Five is Genesis 22, 17. Six is Genesis 27, 28. Seven is Genesis 28, 14. And eight, Galatians 3, 14. So we're looking at the roots of what did God say? What did he promise? And then how does that affect us today? So I hope you wrote those all down. So did you know that the very first declaration of the gospel of a Savior is in Genesis 3.15? That's our first scripture. After Adam and Eve listened to the serpent and disregarded the word of God and they fell into sin, God promised a Savior. And it comes from Genesis 3.15. It says, The Lord God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Do you get that? A promise. I'm going to bring a savior who will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That's the first gospel. The offspring, according to my Bible, the offspring of the woman would eventually crush the serpent's head. And that was a promise fulfilled in Christ's victory over Satan, a victory in which all believers will share. And of course, that victory came on the cross. Jesus Christ defeated the enemy. And all the enemy has now is barking and lies and taunts. And I was listening to a a scripture this morning on the radio and I thought man that is so good because if we continually ignore the truth of God's word and listen to the deceit and lies of the enemy there will be judgment for us eventually God is full of grace and mercy right now and we we say this all the time when you hear the truth you need to respond to the truth here in Malachi 6 here here's a here's a word from the Lord He says, do you expect me to overlook obscene wealth you've piled up by cheating and fraud? Do you think I'll tolerate shady deals and shifty scheming? I'm tired of the violent rich bullying their way with bluffs and lies. I'm fed up, God says, beginning now, you're finished. You'll pay for your sins down to your last cent. No matter how much you get, it will never be enough. Hollow stomachs? empty hearts. No matter how hard you work, you'll have nothing to show for it. Bankrupt lives, wasted souls. You'll plant grass, but never get a lawn. You'll make jelly, but never spread it on your bread. This is, by the way, the message translation. I love this. You'll press apples, but never drink the cider. You have lived by the standards of your king Omri, the decadent lifestyle of the family of Ahab, because you've slavishly followed their fashions, I'm forcing you into bankruptcy. Your way of life will be laughed at, a tasteless joke. Your lives will be derided as futile and fake. And that's from Malik, that's from Micah 6. So there is an end to the, the kindness of God, but right now God's kindness is extended to you. And he declares it the very first time he declared it, in Genesis 3.15, I'm going to put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman. Now, what is enmity? That's a big word, and I don't even know. I didn't know what it was. But the original word in Hebrew is called eba, eba. It means hatred. 
It's spelled in Hebrew Aleph, which is symbol of the ox or the strong father, Yod, which is a symbol of the hand or arm, Beit, which is the tent, the house, the family dwelling, the first mention of the Son of God, and He, which means outstretched arms to the heavens. Behold, pay attention, enmity. You know, Jesus said, I, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. There will be division. I never really understood that, but maybe this alludes to that, that we can follow blindly our own ways and make up what we think is good and, and evil, or we can follow God's ways. I choose to follow God's ways, and I pray that you do too. So enmity. Romans 8, 7 says, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Eve, she listened to the servant, to the serpent, and she ignored the father. And look what happened. They came into sin. So there's the first scripture. That was in the Garden of Eden. So way back in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, 315. And then what happened? The world decayed and became more evil and more evil. And then came Noah. And we all know Noah and the flood. And God said to Noah in 618, I'm sorry I made all this and I'm going to destroy it. He says, but in Genesis 618, I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And then God destroyed evil life with the flood. He saved Noah and his seed repopulated the earth. So we are all descendants of Adam and Noah. So we went from Adam and Eve in the garden to Noah. And God says, I'm going to preserve your seed. Go into the ark. And today the ark, our ark, our preservation, our savior is Jesus, Yeshua. Enter into the ark and be saved like Noah was. And after Noah survived the flood, he was in the boat for a year. And then the, the ground became dry. There are what is called the Noahic law. There are seven moral commands for all of us. There's a command to every person on earth, a command against idolatry, a command against blasphemy. Don't blaspheme the living God. Acknowledge him. There's a command against murder, a command against adultery, a command against robbery. There's a command to establish courts of justice. And there's a command, the seventh command, that says don't eat meat that still has its lifeblood in it. Those are the Noahic laws, the seven. Noah's sons, after the flood, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. Shem was blessed. Ham, the father of Canaan, was cursed. Japheth was blessed through Shem. And the Semites were descendants of Shem. So you can read all this in Genesis. So Noah survived the flood, began to repopulate the earth with his sons. And that led to Abram. And Abram was, is the father of our faith. He's the one who heard God say to him, go to a land you do not know, and I will bless you. And here's what, here's what God said, and this is the second scripture, Genesis 12, 2, 2, that I'd like you to write down. God said to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And then in Genesis 15, 1, he says, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. God is saying this. Your very great reward. A son coming from your own body will be your heir. And Adam, Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He believed God. And that's what we are to do today. We are to believe God. But what I'm trying to do is show you the promises of God through the early days, the early founders. This is back in Genesis. So from Abram came Isaac, which means he laughs. Isaac, of course, was a prototype of a picture of 
God giving his only son, Jesus. Abram was asked to sacrifice his only son. And then at the last minute, God said, stop, don't do it. I've provided a sacrifice. And there was a ram in the thicket. But Abram was willing to the point of believing that even if Isaac was killed, that God would bring him back to life. He believed God. And he didn't have to sacrifice his son. Jesus came to be the sacrifice for us. So Isaac married Rebekah. Isaac was 40 years old, by the way, when he marries Rebekah. And Rebekah gave birth to two twins, Jacob and Esau. And that kind of brings us to our point. Jacob is blessed. Esau, the older twin, is trouble. Remember, he sold his birthright to Jacob for stew. Jacob father's 12 sons and Jacob becomes Israel and when Jacob lays his head down in the promised land he has this wonderful dream of the ladder to heaven and I love this because it's a picture of Jesus extending himself from heaven to earth God touching us we're reaching out and the only bridge is Jesus Christ and that's the ladder Jesus says I am the ladder So Jacob becomes Israel. Here's some more promises. Jacob, God God said to Abram back in Genesis 15, I said I'd, I'd mention these. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So this is Abraham again. This is Jacob's grandfather. In Genesis 22, 7, God says to Abram, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of the enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. So Jacob becomes Israel and out of Israel through all the history, the seed continues and Yeshua is born. Takes many years, but Jesus Christ comes to this planet and is born a baby, and we're going to be celebrating his birth very soon. All of history points to him, Jesus, Yeshua, born a baby in humbleness. He is the one who crushed the serpent's head by his victory over death through the cross, through the grave, rising to life forever. And because he did that, We who believe become sons and daughters of the living God. We become sons and daughters of faith, of Abraham. The promise of God's blessing is for us. And that, my friends, is truth. Nothing can change that. Nothing can triumph over that. We can be deceived and distracted by lies, by the father of lies. He's still a liar. By promises of false hope. But... The deceiver is defeated. He has no power over us. Our Lord won the victory and we are blessed and we walk in it. So Jacob was afraid when he was to encounter Esau. He was in great fear and distress, but he prayed. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and will make your descendants like the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted. So in our fear and in our worry, Turn to Scripture. That's what I'm trying to say. Look at the promises of what God said. He says, you will be victorious because Jesus is coming, the Savior. And guess what? Jesus has come. All of history pointed to that day. God said to Jacob in Genesis 28, 14, he said to Jacob, the one who was afraid, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. (laughs) That is wonderful. These are the promises of God that are still true today. He said, I will bring a a savior who will crush the serpent's head. 
And Jesus did that through his victory on the cross. And we live even now 2,000 years on this side of the cross. That's the wonderful thing about it. Now, here's the, here's the New Testament scripture that I love because it's by faith that we are part, we Gentiles, because of the disobedience of the Jewish people, because they stubbornly refused, many of them, to believe that Jesus was their Messiah. Salvation was offered to us. And Galatians 3.14 says, He redeems us in order that the blessing the, in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So it's for us. It's for all people. It's not only for the Jews. Yes, they were the chosen people, starting with Abram, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But it's for us too. We who are not born Jewish, but we who love God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ has come. We don't have to wait anymore for a Savior. He's here. And when he conquered death, he says, wait for power from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you the Comforter. And so the Spirit of God lives inside of us, we who believe. And Jesus, he says, will come back someday. And you know what? It just seems like Every day that progresses is a day closer to the return of God. And when that comes, will you be found ready? Will there be faith on the earth, the Lord says, because he's coming with a two-edged sword. And for you who have stubbornly refused to submit and to bow your knee to Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, but to listen to the father of lies, the devil, you who have refused to believe, you'll regret it. You'll be sorry. And now is the time where you need to say, yes, Jesus, I believe that you are the Messiah. I believe that you came as the perfect sacrifice. Your death and resurrection for me, I believe it. It's real. It's true. We have shirts here that uh, Pastor Luke helped make. And the front of it says, Jesus is real. And on the back, it's got winds of praise, 98.7 FM. Jesus is real. He is real. Everything else is just a lie. Remember what I read from Micah. You stubbornly think that what you can gather here on earth through any cause is what your reward is. That's nothing. Look beyond that. Look into heaven. That's where your real reward is. And you can be there. I'm going to be there because of faith. Not because of my works. Not because of what I've done or anything like that. It's because I believe. That's our job. Believe in the Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't be deceived. There you go. There's my message. (laughs) There's God's message. Thank you for listening. That's what I would have delivered on Sunday. If you want to reach out to me, this is Scott Albright, and uh, I'm here quite a bit. We have a guitar circle at 10 o'clock this morning in Siletz. If you're interested, we sit around and play together and and fellowship and we've got a lot of good things coming up and i'd invite you to get into a fellowship wherever you may be find a good church and in our area there are lots of good churches find a fellowship and worship god give your heart to him give your life to him in jesus name all right with that i'm going to go back to uh the normal programming And I've been videoing this on my phone and the phone just finally stopped. So uh, I think I got the best part in there. So thanks for listening to Winds of Praise, KWPBLP Newport. God willing, we'll be back on, well, I'm not sure. This Thursday is Thanksgiving. And so with everybody away, maybe I won't be back in on the studio on Friday, but we'll see how that goes. I'll come back in here to work on Wednesday. And again, we're upgrading the studio with the help of Mike, and that's all coming up. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you that you gave me the ability to speak truth. Lord, thank you for your word. I pray that people will write down those scriptures, have written down those scriptures, and look them up. And if they need further explanation, they can call. They can call me, and my phone number is 541-270-7855. 
So God bless you and thank you for listening. And we will return now to our regular programming on KWPB LP Newport. As Ernie Moquin likes to say, give them heaven.